Well, hello everyone, it's Kevin here. Welcome to Mobile DJ Remastered. Today, I wanna to talk about my wedding interview guide or my wedding interview sheet that I use with my couples to get the vital information that I'm gonna to need to plan their wedding and deliver their wedding to exact specifications, but also go above and beyond, okay? You're gonna see all my tricks and secrets here for how I set up my wedding, deliver my weddings, and then get those awesome reviews that I know everybody wants. And beyond that, referrals, because that's really where we start that engine and that cycle to where more and more people will come to us wanting and demanding our DJ services. In fact, I just got a bride and groom asking me, what dates am I free in 2022 next year? Because they wanted to make sure that they booked me before their venue. They wanted to make sure they got me. That's never happened before. So super excited. But that's what happens when people see you and you rock somebody's wedding and they really, really want you to do their wedding. So in any case, the, these are, uh, this is my wedding planning guide or my wedding planning sheet. And I'm going to go ahead and go to the screen here. And I'm gonna walk you guys through this sheet. Now, my typical process is that I will make this available to my clients, but I tell them, I tell my bride, my uh, my couples, don't worry about filling it out beforehand. We're gonna, I'm gonna go through it like a quiz almost, like a, you know, um, interview style. And we're gonna spend 60 minutes, maybe 90 minutes in a meeting where I'm gonna get this information from you guys. And that that is really, really good because it allows me to dig deep and I get to understand what are what's behind some of their answers and I'll see body language or I'll see or he, I'll hear some hesitation and I'll get to probe a little bit more and I'll get those golden nuggets or I'll get that insight that you just can't get if you give if you give this form to the couple flatly and ask them to fill it out. So in any case, I will make a link available in the description below. Um, to this form in case you want to look at it or print it or whatever. And, uh, but I would encourage you make it your own, of course, make your own interview sheet if you don't have one already so that you can get the right information from your couples. Okay. So let's walk through this. There's a section at the top and I ask these questions. Sometimes I already know this, like I'm going to know the wedding date before I sit down with my couple and the ceremony and reception location. Um, I even if I don't cover ceremony, um, if it's at another like a church or something different, I want to know what is that location, um, just so I uh, in case they're the couple's running late or in case someone asks or whatever, I know where they're at. Okay, describe your vision or your vibe for the wedding. Now, this I might already know from our prior conversations, our initial interview. So if I know it, I'll put it in here. But if not, I'll ask, you know, like I want to know what their thoughts are. Are they going for country chic? Are they going for like super, um, you know, high end, super, uh, you know, uh, high, high end kind of uh, vibes? I want to know what their vision is, what they're what they want their vibe to be. They want it super relaxed. Do they want a, a rager like all night party time? Like, I want to know that, okay? And that'll color a lot of my decisions later uh, as I plan the wedding and as I execute their wedding, right? Um, so I, I want to ask that right off the top. Um, most people, I think, aren't, aren't asking this and they just guess. They just guess what people think they want their wedding to be um, or they try to they try to distill it. So I just ask flatly, what is your vision? What's your vibe you want for the wedding? And uh, I get a lot of great input on this, by the way. And it sometimes informs music choices and various things like that. Okay, next up, ceremony rehearsal date. Um, I wanna know this just because uh, if I'm helping with ceremony, I want to know when it is, because if I'm free and uh, by any chance, you know, I, I really try to make the ceremony rehearsal because I wanna be there. Uh, I wanna see, for example, where the wedding party uh, is walking out from where the bride is walking out from with her father, you know, conventionally or whatever the configuration is. I want to know how that that timing is. I want to make sure that, um, you know, it would be so bad if I was covering ceremony and I had no idea of timing or whatnot. And all of a sudden, you know, I'm I'm starting a, a track from the beginning and it doesn't even get to the chorus or the recognizable part of the track by the time the bride and her father get up to the altar or whatever, you know, so I want to know about timing. I want to meet the folks beforehand. It's always really, really good if I can attend the rehearsal. I love to do that. Um, 
some DJs I know feel like that that would be maybe like uh, extra cost or, um, but I look at it as this is the cost to serve. This is um, baked into my price, okay? This is what it takes to execute an awesome wedding. So I try to go to the rehearsal wherever I can. If not, I try to connect with people before the, the actual ceremony and find out what the details are or hear about any like, hey, what, what, who's all walking out? What are the order? What's the order? That kind of thing. So I try to get the details. Okay, what else? description of my service and any party builders. And that's what I call add-ons. So things like uplights and such. So I ask that right off the top or um, typically I've already known this because we have a contract and I'll just type it in here before we meet. So I just verify like, yeah, yeah, we're bringing your monogram, bringing your uplights, we're bringing whatever. Okay. How did you hear about me? I, I love to know this because if I don't know like where they heard about me or um, how they connected with me, I want to know. Okay, so that's uh, you definitely want to find that out if you can. And then I I put this here, and you'll notice it's in yellow. I I highlight all my homework. I call it homework when I um, work with a couple. I say, hey, look, we're gonna go through this, and if if there's something you don't know or can't answer here, or you're still up in the air, I'm gonna highlight it in yellow. And then you got you have a nice little sheet you can just flow through here and you'll see your homework. And typically, there's a balance payment that I'm um, I'm asking them to you know um, pony up, right? I mean they have to pay their balance. So I'm asking them, hey, here's the balance payment that's due, uh, and it's typically I, I have them pay uh, their balance the day before the wedding date, and they can Venmo me or send, write me a check or cash or whatever. Okay, so. Um, I'm gonna keep going. Uh, I'll move a little faster now because I think those those oops those sections are pretty important um, and not everybody's clear on those with their couples. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and go through this next section here. I want to know, of course, the bride and grooms um, or bride and bride or whatever the configuration is. I want to know their full name. And uh, I also want to get their socials if they don't mind. If, you know, I can get their IG. Sometimes. Um, Folks have a, a obscure name on uh, Instagram or whatnot, so I just ask them. And usually they're really super cool and they just tell me and then I can connect with them, tag them later, I can connect with them. And that has given me some great, like for example, um, following up one of my brides uh, on Instagram, I saw a story that she posted and it gave me an idea to try this old song called Whip It. I don't know if you even have heard of it, but by this band called Devo. She, her and her friends like loved it and like did this whole montage thing with it on a story once. And I brought it out of the, on the, at the wedding as a little surprise, like just on the middle of the dance floor. And man, her, her and her two bridesmaids went nuts. The bride and the, her bridesmaids went nuts over it. So I would have just, that was just like kind of cool. But also if you're following them, they're following you and you know, you can kind of uh, spread out and get, get a bigger network and grow, grow for sure. Uh, any case, get their socials and follow follow your brides and grooms and get to know them a little bit that way. Um, and uh, next, this is one of my favorite parts that I do. Um, I do this little music genre affinity quiz. Okay, this is like, hey, I asked I asked uh, the couple, what do you feel? How do you feel about top forty pop or current pop or throwback dance rap? Like you can see the these are the genres that are are typical to a wedding, and then there's of course there's others that maybe like um, uh, you know indie house or something like that would be another genre that's not on here. But sometimes people want you know some alternative or something like that that you you don't have. But you can kind of see, and I give a couple examples. So I'm just like, hey, what do you think about new country? You know, Luke Bryan, Thomas Rhett, that kind of stuff. Or hey, what about classic rock? You know, like Seeger and Journey. And I get a really good response with this because they love it. It's like a kind of a fun thing. It's a great way to break the ice to talk about music. If you just jump in and start asking for tracks, I just don't feel like that's very productive. But if you ask about genres, this then gives you a map for later in the conversation. Also, if you have a bride and groom or a couple that really wants to give you some freedom and they name like a couple must plays and then they're like, dude, take it from here. This gives you that insight so you know if they're given threes to things like pop and and hip hop, okay, you know you can draw from those and three is love, okay? But if they're given like a two or one or, you know, sometimes my couples will like one will say one, one will say two and then they'll be like, okay, one and a half, you know, they'll give me that. That's gold. This is great insight into the couple's preferences and not just their preferences but 
it's almost like they're painting a picture for the kind of party they want to have and their friend groups too, you know, their friend, friend and family group as well. So get that. And then here's some of my, uh, you, you get this little quiz and then I ask them these very pointed questions. Okay. What are some stations or genres you jam to, or like some playlists on Pan Pandora or Spotify or whatever, Apple music, what are some stations like, and if they tell me some of that, I can like, maybe they'll tell me they are all about, you know, XM pop rocks or something like that. Boom. I, I now have like a great little bucket to draw from. Okay. Um, that can help me give them the perfect wedding. Uh, high school graduation year, you know, that's like that peak music era for most people when you graduate high school. And so I always ask them that so that I know like, hey, if I play some of the top hits from that genre, uh, from the genres they love in that time frame, they're going to love it. Now you can guess, of course, right? It's not too hard to guess, but just ask them flatly kind of gives you that insight. Uh, any movie or TV show themes that they love, like Man, if we, a lot of us grew up on, on TV and movies, but if you say like, oh my gosh, I love, uh, it could be anything. It could be Star Wars. It could be, uh, Harry Potter. Um, I recently had one that, uh, a couple of couples that loved Hamilton, you know, that you can go into theater and kind of move out of TV and t uh, TV and movie themes. But what you can do with that is you can kind of like draw, like if they really love those kind of, uh, movies or TV shows or theater pieces or whatever, you can drop, like the main theme song or something like that in the middle of dinner or just if you're doing a transition on the dance floor, something like that. Uh, maybe you got a little remix. I mean, nothing corny, but you could just do that. Um, and it can even be just for a few, like, you know, a 10 second or 15 second, but that can be magic. Okay. That can really engage your couple, make it unique to them. So that's great. Uh, this is my favorite one, special inside joke songs or any kind of songs that you used to, you know, jam to with your family or friends, like those, those songs that every time it came on, you guys would sing, belt out at the top of your lungs or get a, you know, whatever. Everybody's got these secret gems. Okay. Draw them out. Don't just expect them to remember. You got to like prompt them with these questions and then that's going to make them go down memory lane a little bit and think, oh yeah. And I've had all these great moments with my couples when they, they, um, uh, you know, a little spark will come up and they'll be like, oh, you, if you play this, my family will go nuts and you'll have everybody just like, you know, arm in arm singing this song. And it could be something completely off the wall. Like, um, you know, my last wedding, the, the big one was, it's all coming back to me now by Celine Dion. And that one got, it, it, everybody got into it, but the family and the couple really got into it because that was their song. That was one of their inside joke songs. So anyway, um, do that. You'll get these golden nuggets, guys. These are, these are the things that make, um, programming so much more. You can really add some pizzazz to your programming. Okay. What else you got? How to handle dance requests. And I tell them my default is just to play requests. If it's kind of in the zone, if somebody comes up and says, Hey, um, you know, uh, I want to hear some Panic at the Disco. And, you know, I they gave a three to alt pop rock. I'm going to be like, okay, I got you. No problem. Um, if they gave a one to hip hop and, you know, they came up and somebody wanted to hear some, you know, whatever, some, some something new, some, some new hip hop, some new Drake track or something, I'm going to be like, nah, I'm probably, it's not really in the box. It's not in the zone. So I don't play. That's my default. But I asked them, hey, you can tell me, don't take requests or... The other way, you know, let the requests flow, free flow, whatever, you know, but either one of those is dangerous, I think, at a, at a open format kind of party, a wedding. So I kind of coach my couples. This is the best way to handle requests. And I do so respectfully. Of course, I never say, oh, that's not something a couple would want to hear. And so I'm not going to, I do not want to throw shade on the couple during their biggest day of their lives. So don't do that. Uh, take it on you. I don't have it. Or the better way to do it is just, yeah, I'll try to get to it. I'll try to fit it in and then just never get to it. And if you get pressed, you know, ah, I don't have it. Or, you know, uh, it, it, I'll try to get it later, but I don't know if it's going to work and, you know, that kind of thing. But never throw your couple under the bus, right? All right. Uh, any do not play. Oops. Uh, I ask for any do not play. And that's really not something... I don't encourage, like, I, I try not to say, like, hey, give me a whole list of songs. But I, I say, hey, if there's something that you're going to get uh, violently, like, uh, reactive to, like, uh, you do not want to hear this at your wedding, let me know about that. Okay, maybe it's a, a song from an old flame or something. All right. 
uh, I'll ask for that. But I also say I'll give them an out, and this usually squelches this because I know a lot of DJs talk about they do that. You don't want a really long do not playlist because it it's kind of hard to manage, um, right? To make sure you don't play those songs, or it's just it's just an awkward thing. But one thing I do is I say, look. Guys, here's a, here's my deal. Like I'm working for you, and I'm you know you're we're gonna make this night awesome for you. So if I'm playing something and you're like, oh, I don't, I just I didn't imagine he'd play any Justin Bieber. I don't want any Justin Bieber at my wedding. Which come on, everybody likes Justin Bieber. But what if I drop a track and you're just like, no, look at me and go like this. Just do that. I'll you know at the next opportunity, I'll I'll you know mix right out of it. I'll fade out of it. You won't even know it happened. It'll we'll be we'll move on. And that is, uh, that usually lets the couple feel at peace, like at ease, like, okay, cool. Um, I, I don't need to like think of everything I hate right now. Um, <laughs> so in any case, but sometimes they just say no to a whole genre, like do not play country at my wedding. I don't want, or I do not want anything older than 20, you know, two thousands. Okay. I don't want any old stuff, all new stuff. Okay, cool. No line dances, for example, that comes up sometimes or the opposite. I want all line dances. I want a bunch of them. Um, so, uh, and then of course, anytime the couple just starts throwing out tracks, like, oh, you know what I love as I love, you know, that, that, you know, whatever song from whomever, I just grab it and put it in my notes right here. And I just put it in this little box. So I capture it because I don't know where I would want to put it yet uh, or where it might make sense. So I just, if they're spewing tracks, I just drop them in here or artists or whatever, you know. So uh, pretty good so far, I hope. Uh, and then the next part is now we start getting into logistics, right? Like I've explored their music tastes and I'm really dialed in on some things that would work for them. Now we kind of get into wedding party and VIP details. So I asked them about, hey, tell me about your wedding party. Like, um, you know, your first, uh, let's call them, you know, the typical maid of honor, best man, or it could be any other configuration. What, it, give me those first names. And I'm only looking for first names. Uh, I'm not, I'm just going to introduce these folks. I don't need to know their full names unless the full name is required for the introduction. Very uncommon these days. It sounds like, I think Rick Webb one time told me, he, uh, or said it in a video that he, or maybe it was DJ Barr. I don't know. One of those uh, heroes of our DJ industry uh, said like, yeah, I don't want it to sound like graduation. And usually that works. If someone's like on the, on the fence, like, I don't know, do we do last names or not? I'll say, well, you know, it kind of sounds like a graduation ceremony if you do it uh, with the full names and instantly they're like, yeah, yeah first names only. So um, you might have other people to introduce by the way, but um, I just like to build uh, an idea of the wedding party first, okay? So um, if you want to get their names, uh, if it's a nickname, ask them, do you want formal name or you want, you know, um, do you want Meathead or whatever? Or do you want Robert? You know, like what name do you want uh, officially for the introduction? Um, and uh, I would go with the, the nickname, by the way, but uh, whatever, because I think it's fun. Uh so let's see, you do the, 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 uh, maid of, maid of honor or ma man of honor, whatever, best man, best woman, you kind of have that couple first. And then I go through the next pairs and I just ask them in hierarchy order, like your next couple, your next couple, your next pair, your next pair, your next pair. Um, so I have all that and I could add them or subtract rows in this little uh, worksheet if I want to, by the way, I'm filling this out as we are talking on the computer. Uh, I try to get them in person. And uh, of course, uh, during the pandemic, I was doing a lot of remotes and that was fine too. But what's so cool about being in person is, you know, and being on the computer is like, as we're talking about song cho choices and things, I can pop over to my record box and or, or Spotify or whatever and stream or play a, a track right there and like let them listen to it and make sure, I always wanna make sure like, hey, is this, this is the version that you want for your first dance is the right track, the right artist, the right version of the song, because there can be multiple. So I just do that. But anyway, uh, I digress there. Um, I have like over here, right away, by the way, just like if they happen to say like, hey, let me give you my um, maid of honor. Uh, let me give you, you, you her cell phone because we, you know, she'll be texting you when we arrive in the in the in the, you know, the limo, uh, when we pull up to the reception hall or whatever. Cool. You know, that's good. That's a spot I can put that in. 
Okay, so I ask about flower girls or boys. I ask about ring bearers. And this is where, you know, you draw out any other VIPs like coin bearers or anything like that that you might need. Um, you can definitely ask about parents. And I uh, sometimes people have lost their parents or there's divorces involved. So I just ask, I think, a pretty innocuous question. Are your parents attending the wedding? And, you know, that, that can uh, open the door for them to talk about a situation or they can just simply say no or yes it's my mom and dad or whatever it's a you know not too aggressive way to kind of ask that question of who you know who's your mom and dad kind of thing um so hopefully that helps you or if you're if you're struggling with that i mean that's can be a sensitive topic but anyway um i ask about other vips that i would announce okay that i need to know about uh, or just that i might announce at some point um so grandparents or something like that. Uh, typically, there's not too many folks that um, I need to know about um, in terms of the family or the wedding party, other than what we talked about. I ask how many people are coming. Um, and then vendor details. Who's your planner? They have coordinator or contact of the, for the day of. Sometimes it's the same person. Often, I'm not having a planner or a day of coordinator. Um, that's kind of me and you know the bride or the groom or whatever. The couple, they're kind of the planner. And they're just you know, leveraging me or the venue to help with the, some of the planning details, schedule, itinerary and stuff. And then the day of coordinator is, uh, you know, maybe the partially the vendor, the venue person and me or just me. Uh, so that's what I see a lot here in the Midwest and Cincinnati, Ohio. Uh, but anyway, um, I ask for, you know, do we have contacts at the venue? Um, do we have, um, okay, photographer, videographer, officiant, et cetera, okay? Any other services I might want to interact with? Any other vendors like like a photo booth operator or something like that? Um, so I definitely want to know maybe their company or their name so I can interact with them at the, at the time of the wedding. Okay, um, ceremony details. Let's talk through this. This is what I want to know. I want to know, hey, where should I be? And I give them, of course, guidance. Like I typically like to be in the rear so I'm not in your pictures and all that good stuff, you know, any logistics I talk through a little bit with my couple. Ideally, we're either, um, I know the location or we're looking at a, some photos or some overhead views or uh, maybe we're at the location doing, our, doing this meeting. So we talk about logistics um, and then microphone setup. Uh, I just like to ask and I like to talk them through it like, hey, groom, you know, I'm going to tip it. I'm going to put a lavalier on you. I'm going to put one on your efficient. We're going to have a backup handheld mic just in case, et cetera, et cetera. So I just talk about that. I ask if there's going to be a speaker, you know, a speaker, not a speaker emitting sound, but a speaker that would be needing to do a reader, a reading on the microphone. Um, so would there be any speech? You know, in fact, maybe I readers. Hey, you guys are helping, are, you know, walking through this. I'm, um, and, and by the way, that's very organic that I would think of something and then make a little change or tweak. And then this is my template that I just copy and use, copy and use. If I find a tweak, I, I update the template and copy and use it. And then going forward, it's fixed. You know, it's it's got the new uh, information. So uh, very typical for me there. Um, I like to find out, um, oops, I like to find out about, um, the timeline, of course, like when do we think guests will start arriving? And that's kind of a trigger for me to start prelude, uh, which is, you know, my pre-ceremony music. I asked them about, hey, what's your, you know, my default would be to play some contemporary or classical like instrumentals, you know, a um, little Ave Maria, maybe if you're more classical, a little contemporary might be a, you know, a little instrumental of my girl or something like that. And I'm going to put that in here and I asked them just val validate with them and they tell me, um, what they think. I want to know ceremony start time, of course, the wedding party processional, the bridal processional. Um, maybe there's a unity candle or like a sand pouring ceremony, hand fasting where they tie the hands, that Irish thing. Anything like that. If they want me to play a special activity song, I'll put that in there. And then of course a recessional and then how long they think their ceremony might last. Um, that's pretty much all I need to know. Um, and uh, I try to get from my couples on ceremony. Okay, what's next? Reception. Where am I going to be and where, how am I going to set up? 
and I ask about power. Usually uh, this is something I'm gonna work out with the venue or I'm just gonna, you know, it's a professional venue I've been to before or I know, you know, I have confidence that they have DJs so they're used to that. But if it's like a, let's say a, a barn and they're not, it's not a wedding venue or somebody's house, we have to talk about power and how I can get my power. Um, uplighting location if, they, if they've if they ordered it, uh, you know, where would they, where would we wanna put the uplighting? In some cases, there's, you know, there might be a main room and a foyer and a different parts. Where are we going to put the uplighting? Um, sometimes it's like uh, there's poles in the room and maybe we'll be like, hey, let's put the uplighting on the poles to accentuate the features of the room. All kinds of things we can kind of talk about there. Also colors. Um, so if they want specific color or colors. Um, this is also when I ask, hey, do you want me later? Or can I? I ask, can I? Later in the night when things are bumping, you know, maybe after uh, we get into our second dance set or whatever, can I go ahead and turn these on? The I want to turn them on to sound active mode and have the whole place looking like a club, right? Um, usually they're like, hell yeah. You know, that's that's fun, right? Custom monogram light. Uh, where are we going to project if, you, if, you, if they purchased uh, that add-on with me? Um, okay, then I start talking, to, again, this is reception. I start talking about timeline. Uh, so each of the bolded areas are like t time stamps or time uh, moments. And I realized um, as I go through here, there can be some, let's say some reordering. So that's also why it helps to be on a computer because I can just uh, you know cut and paste a row and move it around. Like let's say we're gonna do introduction and right after introduction, instead of going into dinner, they wanna do first dance. And that's, you know, that happens quite a bit. So I can just put my first dance in here or whatever and move that from, it's down below in the file. I can just move it up. Okay, what else we got? We have um, cocktails, uh, hour start time, welcome hour. Um, and I like to just ask, hey, you know, guys, I'm gonna pick from those, the songs you gave me already and the kind of information, or maybe they gave me a playlist. Sometimes brides and groups will give me a playlist to draw from. And I'll say, hey, do you wanna, you want me to go ahead and, and pull, I'll, I'll pull from those and pull from your, the genre quiz we did earlier, but is, is there anything special you definitely want me to play? Otherwise, I'll just kind of pull um, upbeat, you know, kind of fun, positive music, uh, not dance bangers, but, you know, good, good music. Um, from uh, what we talked about earlier. And usually they're like, yes, perfect, go for it. But sometimes they'll say something spe specific like, hey, I only want acoustic songs for, for the cocktail hour just to make it chill and super, super indie. Okay, cool, we'll do acoustics only. Um, okay, stuff like that. And I also asked them, any welcome announcements you'd like me to make during cocktail hour for your guests? Like, hey, don't forget to sign the guest book or whatever. Um, so I asked that. Uh, typically, there's a couple, you know, and that's aside from logistics. Of course, I'm going to, if it's weird, I'm going to point out restrooms, like where they're located, or if it's the bars behind in a basement or something of the of the venue, I'll tell them, hey, don't forget the bars down here. I'm going to try to help people out. Okay, but uh, this is like special stuff uh, that they would want me to call out, not just normal logistics. Uh, wedding party introduction time, of course, is when the, the couple and the wedding party get in and of course I'm one of the best practices I think hopefully everybody's doing this is you go out and you actually line them up because sometimes there's some changes even though you have everybody's name down um, here on your worksheet sometimes they want to change or they want to hey uh, my my kids here now I'm gonna we're gonna come in with our kid announce them too or whatever there's a million different you know different scenarios that could happen. So go ahead and line them up. That also gives you an opportunity to connect with them and hype them up a little bit. Like, guys, don't just swagger in like that. Like, get hype because you're going to set the tone for the party. Like, you know, amp up your wedding party. Um, but here at this point in the interview or the quit in the uh, planning session, you're asking them what's what what when do you want to get introduced? What's that time? And maybe the planner already figured it out wedding planner or maybe um, they have an idea or maybe they're asking you for an idea when should we be introduced etc um what song do you want the wedding party to come into and then um also i ask hey in terms of introduction do you want to include anybody else like the children like the ring bearers um flower girls etc what about parents and grandparents in my market it's usually just the wedding party, sometimes we get the children, but hardly ever do we get parents and grandparents. It's not that official, uh, at least in my market. So uh, I just ask as a courtesy. 
Um, I wouldn't want to assume uh, and then miss. Uh, we also have the couple's intro song. Now this, uh, this is most typical for me, but sometimes people want, like each couple would get their own intro song, each pair would get their own intro song. And that's cool. Um, I think our best practice for that, by the way, is just, you know, create your, your mix or your mashup or whatever you want to call it. Like create one big audio file with the songs back to back to back. Okay. And then just create a hot cue at the, those magic moments when you want to bounce forward into the, the next track. So you can basically set up, you know, your hot cues and have, um, you can have eight songs, of course, right? Back to back to back. If you have, uh, you know, eight hot cue buttons and just, you know, move forward through as opposed to trying to load the track real quick. That can be nerve wracking. Um, but anyway, so that would be a good idea. And then couples intro song would be their song. And then I always ask them, how do you want to be introduced? Here's the standard, standard form. Okay. Is like Mr. and Mrs. John and Jill Smith. You know, do you want something different? Some people don't want their first names. Some, you know, brides might want their former name uh, you know, to be in there somewhere or something like that. Okay. Uh, anyway, there you go. We got wedding party introduction done. And then we move into dinner and I ask things like, Hey, is there a welcome speech? Who's going to do it? Is there a blessing? Who's going to do it? Sometimes it's the same person, sometimes nothing. So in which case I would just do that transitionary. Hey, everybody, welcome. So, we're so glad you're here. And we're going to about, we're going to start dinner. Here's how dinner, dinner's going to work, etc. Um, are there any must play genres or songs for dinner? Now, this is, again, I tell them I'm going to use and basically take all the stuff you've already given me. Again, if they give me a playlist or something to draw from, I can do that too. But I'm going to use the information we've already collected. But do you have anything special? And what comes up here often is, yeah, I want some of those dinner classics or people think of it. They call it the like the Olive Garden or the Buca de Beppo type music. And really what they're talking about is like the, the crooners, like the... Uh, you know, the Frank Sinatra's and the Michael Buble's and those kind of songs. So, uh, you know, a little bit of, you know, sing along jazz kind of stuff. So, you know, and if they um, don't ask, sometimes I ask them, like if I'm getting a vibe, like they might like that. I'll say, hey, what do you guys think about a little bit Frank Sinatra kind of stuff? A little Dean Martin, just a little bit sprinkled in. And they'll, they'll give me that feedback. Like, no way. Or most people say, yeah, hell yeah, I want that. And sprinkle that in. So there's that. Um, dinner announcements. Are there any, is there anything I can say over dinner, do over dinner? This is a great spot to call out anniversaries, birthdays, special things that you want to call out. Um, I also ask, should I be the, should I do the captain's call, which is kind of like for a buffet, right? It's, it's the releasing tables. I absolutely love this. And if someone is there that wants to do, you know, that if it's a buffet, I always offer and then I, I, I'll, I don't insist, but I'm like, hey, I would really like to do the captain's call if I can. This gives me an opportunity. I don't do it over the mic. I go up to the table and I can release the tables and it gives me an opportunity to interact a little bit with the guests, which is so good because later I'm going to ask them to dance, right? And I want to, them to make a connection with the DJ. So I do that. I'll, I'll do that all day long. I love that. Um, and it, it just helps me. Uh, I know I'm. it's kind of crazy. I'm bouncing. I'm like a bungee, right? Like I'm going back to the DJ booth. I'm bouncing out, going to the tables, bouncing back, going out to the tables to release the next one. And I'm monitoring the line and the flow. And I'm talking maybe a little bit to the caterer, make sure we're not overwhelming them, but it's all good. It's, it's very, very positive. And all that motion just helps me get into it and it helps me connect with the people. Anyway, I bring this up just because sometimes the photographers forget to mention this or whatever, but I just say, hey, are you guys doing like any golden hour photos? Like where the photographer steals the couple um, or maybe some of the bridal party and they go out, uh, catch some of those uh, last rays of sun and they get those great pictures. Um, that's something that we need to know about because, you know, it's good to know if, if that's going to happen because we can put it on the schedule and then we'll just know. So we won't try to start something when, and then miss sunset, you know, like sometimes you're in the middle of something, like cake cutting, and then, uh, you know, it might run long and, Oh, we don't want to do that. So, um, so any case, uh, I try to just ask that. And there's some couples appreciate like, Oh, we never even thought about that. We didn't talk to, I'm going to talk to our photographer. So some people appreciate bringing that up. Um, toast time. What are we going to do for speeches and toasts, right? And who's going to do it? Typically, it's the like maid of honor, best man kind of thing. But who's going to do it? Okay. Then I ask for special or formal dances. This is like parent dances, right? 
Um, f well, first dance, of course, with the couple's first dance, then parent dances. Who's going to do the dances? Who's, is it, is it dad and bride? Uh, is it, you know, what's the configuration here? Um, and then is there any, any other special dances? Okay. So we go through these. Now, what I've seen probably 30% of the time or so, uh, with my weddings here in my market anyway, is that the first dance, the couple wants to do that right away, like right as they do the intro. Okay. And I don't know if that's a trend everywhere, but uh, they like to get that kind of like knocked out, if you want to say that, or they want to, they want to, you know, they spotlights on them. They just can't, they got introduced. They want to do their uh, first dance, or maybe they want to say, "Hey, let's get it over." Uh, not, not over with. I don't want to put it that way, but you know, let's do it early so we can get to the more relaxed uh, party kind of time. You know, let, let's take that one stressful. Um, cause some people don't want the eyes on them. Right. So let's get that, get, let's get that knocked out. Uh, so this is, but this is typical for me. Most typical is like, we do this former formal dances after toasts. Then we move into open dancing. And I always like to do like two sets, like, like an initial phase one of dancing where we get everybody involved and then a phase two a little later. So how to get open dancing started. I like to talk to my couple about this. Now, a lot of DJs will probably be like, dude, do your job. Just figure it out. Um, get that dance floor going. Uh, but I like talking to them because here's, here's why. Um, there's a couple ways you can start a dance floor. I'm sure everybody is, uh, if you're watching this channel, you're probably aware, uh, and you've probably done a lot of different tricks. Um, and, uh, whether it's, uh, try to start with a banger, start with a slow song, do something like where you uh, play a line dance. I mean, there's lots of ways to start a dance party, okay? Lots of dance floor starters. But I like to talk about it because I wanna just see their vibe and how how much into the party they're, in, they're at uh, or, 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 or they're into. I also use this as an opportunity to bring up some good ideas like the all dance and the group photo are both super good ways to start your dance floor. An all dance is like, you know, you pick a slow song, it doesn't have to be the slow song. It can be something a little bit um, slow where you would slow dance, but it might have a up tempo to it. And you invite everyone. You say, hey, at this time, you know, right now, the couple would like to invite everyone to the dance floor for a special all dance. Please join the couple right now. And you know, they just dance with their themselves, you know, uh, the couple dance. The, they just had their parent dances. And now you're bringing everyone up. And a lot of people will want to come up and uh, they'll want to oblige, especially if you say the couple would like to invite you to the dance floor and we're trying to get everybody up. That's super great way because once you have everybody up there and you do your slow dances, and you got this all dance going. Everybody, the photographers love it. You're going to get pictures. They're, they're going to get their pictures of a bunch of people on the dance floor. It's still early in the night, so most people are still there. And... Then you've got a captive audience. So after that, you can say, hey, guys, now it's time to get that dancing started. Let's oh, let's go, you know, and you can drop a banger, uh, drop something that everybody's going to it's going to appeal to everybody. You know, some September, some some Bruno, uh, something like uh, I love to start my dance floors with some some uh, some staying alive or some dancing queen, something like that, that, you know, in the 100 BPM range is usually good because then you can kind of build up and up and up. Um, but. Stuff like that could really, um, uh, that, that's a really good way format to start a dance floor. Another way would be, um, let's say, uh, the group photo. I love the group photo because what a great, you know, that dance floor shot, especially if you're, you're a photographer, you can get up high on a balcony or like up on a little la ladder or something, and you can get that full shot of everybody on the dance floor. You get everybody there, uh, and then you drop the banger and you get the dance floor started. Usually people stick around for at least a song or two and, and uh, the photographers love it because they're going to get us some, some shots of a really packed full dance floor and you just kick started it. Now, some people will be like, they'll hang out for the picture and then they'll kind of mosey back. They're not ready yet. Maybe they need a little more alcohol. Maybe they're just, that's not their jam, whatever. But um, I love to talk about that with my couples and give them some, uh, you know, see what their reaction is to the ideas. Most couples say, Oh, however you want to do it, but that's awesome, you know. So, what else? Intelligent lighting for dancing. Um, this is just like, hey, my dance lights that go with the music. I ask just because, like, I have had a couple say, hey, we have 
Um, uh, we get extreme, like one person, uh, a bride once said, I get extreme headaches with flashing strobes. So y y if you do dancing, dance line, just make it really soft. And that was good that we talked about that uh, beforehand. So I didn't want to ruin her night by giving her a headache. So in any case, it's good to just talk about it, but um, it also calls out, hey, I'm, I'm bringing uh, the party, right? We're going to have some cool lighting that's going to go with the music. Um, and then I, this is where I ask, like, hey, I know we talked about music and you, and they still might have given me a playlist or maybe they're going to give me a playlist at this time. But I say, what, what are your must play dancing songs? Like your jams that you, you got to hear when we're, when we're dancing. So I kind of collect those here or again, a link to a playlist or a, sometimes couples will bring a piece of paper like, hey, we jotted some down and they'll give it to me. Whatever. I'll take whatever they give me. Um, I don't need as much that like if they're trying to struggle like well okay well let's do this and how about you know some pit bull and some blah 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 and then I kind of like guide them to the point of well thank you guys for those uh, picks um, I've got all of the great input that you gave me earlier so I'm gonna be able to derive a really good dance party for you guys and based on the vibe you, you know we we discussed so I don't think. Um, you need to sit there in an awkward silence waiting with your pen or waiting on the keyboard, waiting to draw out all these tunes from people or like, uh, you know, you've all had that experience where they get on their phone and they're like scrolling through like, hmm, let me see. They're looking through their playlist. They're trying to find tracks. And I, I definitely let them do that for a little bit, but I try to, I try to move the conversation forward because at that point, um, they're, they're kind of doing, you know, you don't need them to do their, your job. If I, if I want to say it that way, um, you do want to know their favorites, like their absolute gotta have songs, of course, but, um, you don't need to like, uh, derive a whole playlist from them or with them. Uh, so that would be my advice. Anyway, what else we got? Uh, if we're doing led batons, um, I'll, I'll usually come up with this myself or like, um, and sometimes I'll ask them about it, but these are those, uh, those glow sticks, basically the big foam, uh, glow batons that, um, light up. And if we're going to do that, if that's part of their party add on, um, I like to, I like to think ahead of time. What's the song that we're going to drop those at? Like, is it going to be like some LMFAO? Is it going to be something that's just super hype that we'll drop those on, um, uh, the uh, uh, recent wedding, they love the crab dance, the crab rave, and uh, that that YouTube video and song. Anyway, we dropped it on the crab rave, and it went insane. It was so good, uh, the, the LED batons. Anyway, um, also, I ask, are there any must-play songs for slow dances? Sometimes, again, the couple's already made a mention of a couple, but I, I ask this just in case we do a little, you know, I, I like to do like a break, like a one or two a little section of the night where we're just kind of cooling off. We're kind of <laughs> letting things chill. We're letting people get close, right? A little romance. And we uh, play a slow dance or two. So I'd like to ask if there's any slow dances we didn't talk about yet that would be good for that. Then, um, of course, after I like to do that first dance set, maybe 20 minutes, half hour of dancing for everybody. Okay, get grandma and grandpa up there. Get everybody to uh, get in the, on the cardio. And then we do like cake and other formalities. But um, not all the time this has happened. Sometimes the cake will, you know, the venue or the caterer will want to do cake earlier or whatever. So I just kind of have these here, cake, bouquet garter, if that's still going on. Uh, I see less and less of the garter for sure. And the bouquet is still a thing here in the Midwest. We still do the bouquet toss. Um for most weddings, I'd say, what song do you want to go with those? Um, and then any other activities. So this could be, you know, anniversary countdown dance. Um, this could be an, um, the newlywed shoe game or anything really. So, um, we do that. And then I have, you can, you guys can see we're at the end here. Uh, finally, right. This is, uh, I, I apologize. It's so long, but, uh, so much good stuff to talk about, right? Last dance of the evening song. What do you guys want to finish the evening on? And usually I, if they don't know, I have my track ideas that I'll share with them. But uh, I think it's always good to, to end on either an absolute banger or an absolute gem that everybody, that the family loves and knows, the family and friends know and love, or a sing-along that everybody knows and loves. So uh, one of those kind of three work really well. Um 
you know, and I think that those, uh, once you say that, that might even spark like, oh, well, actually, could you play like, could you play this and then also this at the very last song, but also this as the second to last song. So sometimes that comes up. So you can capture that here. Um, you, you should know if there's any post reception send off, like, you know, sparkler send off or bubbles or whatever. Not that you're going to maybe have a track to it because maybe they'll be outside um, or leaving the area, but you might want to have something like that and just ask. And then so maybe you can play something specific or you can, you know, it, it's really helpful because then you can announce like the directions, right? Like, hey guys, uh, we want you to line out, uh, line up outside and there's going to be sparklers. Somebody will be around to light your sparkler, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Um, and then finally reception end time and any other notes, if, if, uh, if they want me to wear something specific, I, I sometimes will ask like, hey, is there anything, you know, do you want me in a tux? Nobody wants the tux anymore, but I just sometimes ask. I think I have one request for a tux and, uh, you know, wear the tux. But, um, and usually this is just me to say, this is an opportunity for me to say, hey, is there anything else we didn't talk about that you would want to tell me? So we give you your perfect wedding. Guys, that is all I have for my wedding planning template or my wedding planning guide. Hopefully it's been helpful. Like I said, I wanna put a uh, link in the description so you, you guys can look at this file or whatever and you can use it, butcher it up, cut it up and make it your own. I highly suggest you go through it, make it your own. You know, Ask your own questions, do the things, make sure to get the information that you need to give the best wedding you can for your couples. Okay guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Thank you.